Greetings, greetings, all my dreamers and dreamettes. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support my brand, it's inspiredbydreams.shop. We got the latest from snapbacks to hoodies. Okay, today's episode, we're covering biracial versus multi generational mix, exploring the identity, race, and culture. Let's get it. Mickey made it. Mickey made what you made, Mickey. Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. Listen, I've never been more aware of my blackness until coming to America. People who don't live in America legitimately do not understand how much race plays a part in like every aspect of your life. I was in an Uber one time and the Uber driver who was a black man asked me if I was mixed. And I said, yes, my dad's from Italy and my mom's American. And he looks at me in the rear view mirror and he goes, you know you black, right? And I was like, well, you asked if I was mixed. So I said, I'm Italian American. And he pauses for a couple seconds and he looks in the mirror again and he goes, you black. Okay, like I'm, I, so what were you expecting when you asked me that question? Like, did you just want me to say like, yeah, I'm light skinned? I don't like what? And I was just reminded of the fact that when I moved to America, I had to stop thinking of myself as like Métis because in Senegal, we call mixed people Métis and that's just as valid of a race as either being black or white. And his comment to me just felt kind of like, okay, you may think you're mixed, but just remember in this country, you are a black woman who is oppressed and the white men will see you as a black woman and you will be treated as a black woman. And I was like, I, I live my own experience. Like I, I'm very much aware of how I interact with people in America. Like it just felt like such a random ass, I don't fucking know. But anyways, it makes sense why a lot of foreigners are like, why are Americans so obsessed with race? We are. There truly is power in being a multi-generational mixed person because right now the discourse is, oh, you have a white mom, you have a white dad. I have neither of those things, or I have both, because both of my parents are mixed, and I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> One thing that I've noticed about being mixed, I'm half black, half white, but I think people who have any part black would probably be able to relate to this. And I know talking about being mixed on this app is not for the week, but here I go. Also prefacing that I grew up in a predominantly white suburb. I go to a PWI, so I've been surrounded by a lot of white people throughout my life. But for some reason, racist people genuinely think they can confide in me. The amount of people who say things to me or who act a certain way or who are friends with me but not friends with any other black people or don't say anything to any other black people because they think that because I'm half black or I don't really look black, it's okay to say, it's okay to hang out with me. Like I don't really count as black. Someone has actually told me that, well, she's not even that black to get mad about that. And it's always the people who are subtly racist and you don't know and then finally their true colors come out. And I'm like, how have I been friends with you this whole time? And it's because they just, don't think of you as black so they don't have an issue with it and then until they say something and get confronted about it and then it's kind of like a oh well, I, I and it's always just them apologizing or them being sorry that I had my feelings hurt and the intention wasn't for me to be upset or the intention wasn't for me to be hurt but I'm like you should be apologizing for being racist not hurting my feelings. The issue is you being racist, not how I feel about what you said. I don't know if any other mixed people can relate to this, but I just feel like the racist people think they can confide in me and it's disgusting. But honestly, I can catch them all. So if you wanted to put your friend up to the test or you wanted to see if someone was racist, send them my way because eventually it's gonna come out and they think they can confide in me. This may be a little bit of a controversial topic, but it's lived experience and if you identify as biracial, multiracial, mixed, if you thinking about having a kid with someone that is not of your culture, for example, a white person having a kid with a black person, please make sure that you are equipped for what that's going to take. Let me explain. I say all this because, like I said, lived experience I grew up with a white family and my black family was all the way across in a different state. Matter of fact, 
I'll probably talk about the dad at some point because it's definitely not positive. Besides that, the influence was definitely lacking because the connection, having someone so far apart that I could try to identify with as much as possible as walking out into this world is being looked at as just black and maybe not mixed because they won't know because I took more black features. That's that's a whole nother conversation, but let, let me tell y'all this. It can make it quite difficult when somebody is not being taught or a kid is not being talked to about race and the things that involve race and the unjust things that they as a black mixed person may experience and if the parent is not educated if they're not trying to educate if they're not trying to self-teach to kind of understand when it comes down to conflict when it comes down to problem solving when it comes down to lived experiences they don't know how to relate they may not know how to relate most likely y'all this topic is very complex and i'm barely touching the surface right now but what i can say is if you have a mixed child if you are thinking about having a mixed child in order to try to understand not even really relate because there's no relating there's no relating <laughs> it's a different lived experience but understanding and trying to do your own research making yourself open when things arise to where you all can figure it out together like having these conversations are very important which it goes down to communication in every aspect relationship that you carry into this world is the key and i just encourage y'all to get educated and for me this is coming up really heavy because i have had many times that i have been at these tables specifically at the schools where I've been at these tables trying to point out certain things that seem to be unjust and seem to be because of the color of my baby skin. It's like I'm literally figuring it out along the way and then I'll do some research and then I'll try to self-educate. But as far as that, there's nobody sitting at these tables with me necessarily. I don't have so much of a system or support that is going to ride with me, with me and my kids when we experience these things. And as far as myself, did I experience some of these things? Probably so. And I understand over years, things are talked about even more. Subjects are coming out even more. And this one, I think, definitely should be talked about even more. And the reason why I say it's important to self-educate is because that's it. I know a mom who uh, has adopted some children from um, Africa. And she's a white woman. And she is very involved, probably more involved than most she definitely is like top tier <laughs> and i'm not saying being top tier i'm just saying yeah if you gotta go to the school yeah if you gotta support your child with their grandchildren to go to the school how do we need to talk about these things because i'm gonna say this and even though it's nice and all and it's thoughtful but just getting your black kids grandkids family member something that represents blackness whether that's a gift a book a link from youtube is not enough like 
Can we please talk about the language that we use to describe biracial identity? I personally never say I'm half this and half that because I feel like that language diminishes the way that we fully stand in both of our identities. I always say I'm black and white. I'm black and Jewish. And that language choice is really intentional. So who wins when we pit mixed black girls against other black girls? If you guess white supremacy, you get a point. There's a long traumatic history of black mixed women being used to silence and marginalize other black women. And that is painful and horrible. There's also a history of mixed black women using their proximity to whiteness to hurt other black women and that they have to be held accountable for. But there's been this whole mess in my comments about why people like me who are considered biracial or multi-ethnic should not consider themselves black and should step out of this whole conversation. But why are people so insistent on making sure that I don't connect to my black heritage and other mixed kids don't connect to their black heritage in a way that changes society? When my black classmate invited me to a protest many years ago, it changed my life in so many ways because I was able to go back to my own community and challenge people who otherwise never would have looked at their own anti-blackness or considered the fact that we still have a long way to go. White supremacy is brilliant because one of the ways it works is it creates meaning out of differences. Playing up the differences in the black community and creating more division means there's less solidarity and there's less of a unified front against white supremacy. I have been super disappointed with the mixed black girls in my life who have completely swallowed this and been like, yep, we're not black and have then spent their lives running after whatever white privilege offers them. At best, they do nothing and the status quo remains the same, but at worst, they're supporting racist partners, they're supporting racist structures, and they're unable to see the racism that runs all around us. And then there are the parents that are like, well, I don't want my kids to choose. If you live in America, the choice has already been made for you. The disproportionate outcomes we see in education and healthcare and in the justice system all fall along made up categories of race. And you have to learn how to deal with it and you have to learn how to fight against that. America is getting tanner by the year. There's all sorts of mixed babies popping up everywhere. Who does it benefit if they don't connect to their heritage and look at the way the entirety of their heritage has come together to create the system that we live in now? Anyone here at Tubman would have left behind on the plantation? I understand, don't argue with those people. You can't get them all. But there are people that are willing to not only be called out, but to be called in to greater solidarity and who want to work together as a community to make this place better for everybody. We could spend years arguing about who's black, who's not black, who's black enough, who's this, who's that. That's all a big waste of time. It doesn't teach mixed black people how to be accountable for their own privilege and how to use that to help people. And it further divides the community and nothing gets done. It also means we're letting mixed black people buy into the very premise of colorism and white supremacy, which says your proximity to whiteness is what makes you superior as a human being. Don't do it. What message does that send to white passing mixed kids too? Oh, you don't look the part, so you have nothing to give to making this place more just? When you look at my comment sections and all these other places where you see people fighting about what it means to be black and who gets to be black, just think about who wins. So growing up mixed, I'm Mexican, Italian, and black. And no one ever thought my parents were together. Uh, they definitely did not think that my dad was my dad. And when we moved to the South for like a year, whoa, it was a culture shock, baby. It's 100% a generational thing. I have wondered over the years if I would have felt differently if I had been born 10 years later or if I had been raised differently if my parents had been born 10 years later, right? Um, like I stated in, in the original video, there was no established, concrete, collective um, biracial movement or biracial or mixed identity like there is now. Um, I think the one that's happening now is still is still burgeoning. It's still developing. Yes, there were people, there have always been people that identified themselves as biracial or mixed, but I'm talking about as a general collective identity that did not exist when I was coming up. Um, at least not in the 70s and the 80s, right? Um, and I, I, again, as I stated multiple times in the video, I don't see anything wrong with people wanting to call themselves mixed or biracial. I think people just need to be honest about why they're making that choice. If you're making that choice in order to quote unquote honor both sides or stay quote unquote connected to both sides, then that's great. That's beautiful. That's wonderful, right? If you're doing it to 
maintain closer proximity to whiteness and power, that's a different story. And there's a lot of people that are doing that, a lot of biracial people that are doing that, and they're not honest about it, and they need to be. And honestly, I wonder if they even recognize it themselves, right? Also, yes, the one drop rule is racist, absolutely, but that's not who I'm talking about. I'm not talking about people who would have once been labeled quadroons or octoroons or whatever. I'm talking about biracial people. I'm talking about people with one black parent, not one great grandparent, one black great grandparent. That's why I use the term biracial. Good day, good people. Let's get into biracial people and identity. So for me personally, I have always identified more with my black side. I look more black than I do white. My skin is darker, even though I'm still obviously light skinned. Um, and that's just, that resonated with me. So I always gravitated towards that. In elementary school, I do remember when I was in a predominantly white school, I just noticed like that my body just looked different than theirs and my hair. And I was confused as a child. And then I started going to schools that had more black people. And I'm like, oh, those are my people. Like I look like them. Um, but society can make you feel like you have to choose the way that you're raised, um, your friends. You might not be black enough for the black people and then you're too black for the white people. And then you're like in the middle, like, well, what do I do? Um, and so I think it comes down to like personal preference and what resonates with you. Um, also, I know some extremely fair skinned mixed people who identify more with their white side. I think there's nothing wrong with either. I don't even though I do identify as a black woman i am biracial i love my white side but on a personal level i am black you know what i'm saying um no offense to anybody of course but it's just my truth so yeah the whole identity thing can certainly be a thing for biracial people absolutely and it's more than just them doing that to themselves it's a lot of things that go into that all right y'all have a good one so i've recently come across this term multi-generational mixed race and I really identify with it because that's my lived experience. Both my parents are multiracial and my dad is the only parent I have who has a white parent. Um, so when I grew up, um, I grew up in a black neighborhood, 82% black. Um, and I felt like I really belonged within the black community. You know, um, elders would clock me. And people said, like, you know, what are you? You're black. Um, you know, and that is how my identity was shaped. Um, and at the same time, I'm beginning to recognize that that was a different time and place. Um, now I'm hearing a lot more discourse that's like, if you look white, you are white. Um, I especially hear that from non-black people. Um, I still have a lot of friends and family members who consider me to be part of black culture, black community, black family. Um, and so, um, you know, it's confusing. Um, I don't want to overstep. I know that my existence can be triggering for people um, because of the history of colorism within the black community um, and because so many multiracial people fuck up and aren't in solidarity, aren't in alliance with um black people with pan-Africanism with um you know truly anti-racist politics um and behaviors so you know I definitely benefit from colorism that's obvious um and at the same time I have experienced racism and I don't believe that white people accept me as white we're only two generations out of slavery and racial discourse is changing fast so I don't want to overstep and I want to pay respect to my ancestors and to my own identity and my own lived experiences. So that's where I'm at. Okay, what I could say with this with this whole conversation is if you're going to if you're going to judge somebody, judge them from the inside, not the outside. So you'll have a more accurate, you know, just an accurate feel of who that person is before you know you automatically think because usually a lot of us were made out of love you guys let me know what you think if you're you know if you had experienced this or know anybody experienced this and if you want to talk about this conversation you know you can we can always talk about it on my morning show mondays wednesdays and fridays at 9 a.m love you guys and leave your comments down below and you know i'll get back to you all right 
Until next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. 